Hi, friends and fellow Camp Gilead fans. It's great to have you join me on here. I just want to encourage you, if you haven't watched any of the other videos available on Camp Gilead's YouTube channel, there are great resources available for free all summer. There have been camp uh, speakers, past camp speakers, sharing God's Word from the Gospel of Mark. And with short videos, you can go through the whole entire Gospel of Mark. So I encourage you to do that. It's good of you to join us for Mark chapter 16 today. My name is Tim Counts, and I'm the pastor at Northshire Baptist Church in Manchester Center, Vermont. And I've had the privilege of being a part of Camp Gilead's ministry for over 10 years as either a staff member or a camp speaker. I was a camper for years uh, during before that time, and Camp Gilead is one of those places that just has a really special place in my heart. We've made lifelong friends there and uh, so many special times with the Lord. So I hope you're encouraging that time at home this summer and uh, hope that you can be at Camp Gilead next summer. Mark chapter 16, I want you to notice before we read verses 9 to 13 for today's passage, you might notice if you look in your Bible that there's some brackets right there and we're going to talk about that in the next video. So I just want you to know that we're not ignoring that. You can look at the next video and we'll explain that. We're going to talk about Mary Magdalene in verses 9 to 11, and there's a couple of things that we should know about Mary Magdalene. First, we see that Mary Magdalene watched Jesus die on the cross. We see that Mary Magdalene saw Jesus buried, so she watched to see exactly where he was buried. She also brought spices with some of the other women to honor him in his burial uh, right after, uh, well, the, the morning of the third day. And what we see right here in verse 9 is that morning, on Sunday morning, it says in verse 9 of Mark chapter 16, Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, talking about Jesus rising from the dead, it says he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Now I want you to notice that Jesus had cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. I think it says something about her love for Jesus. Think about how much she had changed his life. Think about what her life would have been like as a demon-possessed woman and having seven demons in her. And Jesus completely changed her life. Think of what Jesus has done for you before we move on. Just think about what would your life be like if you didn't know Jesus as your Savior. I think that I, I pause for a moment because I want you to think about that and really think, what do you think your life would be like if you didn't know Jesus? And maybe some of you watching don't know him yet, and I just want to encourage you that just like Mary Magdalene, Jesus can change your life. The most important thing is that he saves us and that we know we're going to heaven. But if we know we're going to heaven, then our lives should be changed. Our lives should be different here. We're living for him now. What would your life be like without Jesus? And if you can think about how Jesus has worked in your life, then I think it will change the way that you think about him and live for him, just like it did with Mary Magdalene. She followed Jesus all the way to the cross. She followed him to the tomb, and then she went to honor him in his death, but she finds out that he's alive. Look at verses 10 to 11. It says, She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. I want you to think about that. They would not believe it. There may be friends that you tell about Jesus who don't believe you, at least at first. There might be people in your church who even discourage you in your walk with Jesus, maybe because of how you see them living their lives. And I just want to encourage you to do what Mary did. You notice Mary Magdalene didn't walk away from Jesus because people disappointed her. I've had people share with me as a pastor how disappointed they are in other Christians. And that can always be hard. But one thing, I remember one couple in particular who uh, had had trouble finding a church because they were just always disappointed by other Christians. And one of the things that I challenged them with is that we're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've been a disappointment, right? You've been a disappointment. I've been a disappointment to other Christians. But let's keep our eyes on Jesus together because he will never disappoint us. Let's have patience with each other. Look at what Mary Magdalene did here. They didn't believe her at first, but they will believe. Now let's look at verses 12 to 13. It says, After these things, 
he, Jesus, appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. They also didn't believe at first. Two of them are out walking in the country. We're pretty sure that this is what the Gospel of Luke talks about. In Luke chapter 24, there's these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And do you remember what Jesus did when he met those disciples on the road? First of all, Jesus finds them, which I think is encouraging. But what does Jesus do? He teaches them about himself from the law and the prophets. And that's when their eyes are open later, after they have heard who Jesus is from the word. And so I want to encourage you as you wrap up this summer, whether you've just joined us for this video and maybe we'll do some of the others, or if you've been with us all the way along through the Gospel of Mark, I want to encourage you to hear the word taught, spend time with Jesus, and then your eyes will be open to who he is. That's what happened with these two disciples that we see in Mark chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. I was actually at a Christian camp, and I was young when I made a decision, I think it was early middle school, to start spending time with God in his word on my own every day. I was challenged by that at camp, and when I made that commitment and started to do that, my eyes were opened in a new way, in a fresh way, in a way that applied to my everyday life as I spent a little bit of time in the Word every day. So I challenge you to do that just like these disciples here. They were so discouraged, but when they heard the Word taught, when they spent time with Jesus, then they saw who Jesus was. It says their hearts burn within them in Luke. Well, great job memorizing verses, doing challenges, studying God's Word. I'll see you in the next video.